In this video, I'll be comparing the average wages in both New Zealand and Australia. It is said that wages are higher in Australia, so in this video, I'll be using official government data to confirm whether this is in fact true. Make sure to stick around as the results are surprising. The New Zealand media have long praised Australia as a better option for Kiwis. Higher wages, a lower cost of living and warmer weather are often touted as being better across the ditch. And of course, many Kiwis have made the hop across the ditch already in search of a better life for them and their families. Stats NZ, the New Zealand government's data collection agency, reported that from 2004 to 2013, New Zealand had an average annual net migration loss to Australia of 3,000 citizens. In 2023, this rose sevenfold to over 21,000. And it's not surprising. Many people I went to school with have since moved to Australia and the UK, especially so after the pandemic. When we consider the rising cost of living, house prices, and a lack of career opportunities, among a myriad of other issues, many Kiwis have migrated in search for a better fortune abroad. Many migrants abroad have touted Australia's better wages. In this video, I wanted to put it to the test. In January, the Australian Bureau of Statistics released their employee and earnings data for 2023. In New Zealand, our stats department released similar data also in 2023. With relatively recent data from both countries, this should be a fair comparison. However, just comparing the government figures though would be incomplete. I'll also be looking to adjust these figures for income tax and on top of that again, adjusting for the difference in exchange rate. At the time this video was made, Kiwis got just 91.7 Australian cents on the Kiwi dollar. So we'll make these adjustments to compare wages on an equal footing. First up, we have the Australian income data. I got it from the Australian Bureau of Statistics website. It was also shared on the Many of Many website looking at the average Australian wage. I'll include links to both sites down below in the video description. So here's the data here. They provide a bit of a pack, looking at the incomes of Australians broken down by age, occupation, industry, employer size, and a raft of other measures. We're interested in the second table, breaking the figures down by age. About halfway down, we get the average weekly total cash earnings for all full-time employees in Australia. I've already captured these figures in Google Sheets for our analysis. But now let's jump into the New Zealand figures. I got these from Stats NZ. They have a portal called nz.stat online, which allows you to essentially run a pivot table over their data. I was able to narrow down the data to show the average weekly earnings and the number of people in each age group. Here you can see I've extracted the data already into Google Sheets. So now we have all the data that we need to do this analysis. As you can see, the data is lopsided, with the age groups being different. We'll need to adjust the New Zealand figures to fit into the Australian groupings. We can simply use the number of full-time workers in each group to weight the salaries. Once that's done, we're left with this table. At a glance, we can already see the difference between these two countries. While the under 20s are 8% better off in New Zealand, at every other age group, the difference grows to about 20% in the favour of Australia. In Australia, as well as New Zealand, average incomes are highest in the 45 to 54 age group. This isn't surprising, as by this age, many will have become managers or have spent decades honing their craft and relationships in their sector. Analyzing these figures, the average 45 to 54 year old in Australia earns $116,000. In New Zealand, this figure is a much lower 98,000 on average. But this is just the start, as we haven't yet considered the tax rates and difference in exchange rate, so stay tuned for that. Now we must adjust these income levels for the tax rates in both countries. Here you can see both Australia and New Zealand's tax rates. In New Zealand, rates start at 10.5% and top out at 39% for income above 180000 a year. Over in Australia, just last month, the ATO announced they were dropping their tax rates. In the 2024 and 25 tax year, the 19% and 32.5% rates are dropping to 16 and 30% respectively. They're also playing around with the tax thresholds, which have been adjusted for incomes above 120,000 and 180,000. This, of course, will push up the relative incomes in Australia, as their citizens will hold on to more of their earnings. Applying these tax rates to our incomes, here's what we get. As you can see, by the widening gap between wages, Australians have a lower tax burden on income than Kiwis. Let's take a second to consider their GST rate is a lower 10% as well. So Kiwis are getting taxed at a higher rate on income and spending, both ends of the stick. The difference for under 20s is just 2% in favour of New Zealand 
but at the higher incomes this goes as high as 23% in favour of Australia. But of course, we aren't done yet. The Australian dollar is worth about 9% more than the New Zealand dollar. This gap is about to widen yet again. As mentioned earlier, the exchange rate at the time of making this video was 91.7 cents to the New Zealand dollar. Once we apply the exchange rate to the Australian wages, we can see the final figure comparing wages between the two countries. Under 20s, after considering both the tax and exchange rates, a 6% better off in Australia from an income perspective. For 21 to 34 year olds this grows to a whopping 30%. 35 to 44 year olds peak at 34% better off in Australia. Those aged 44 to 54 are 31% richer in Australia. And finally those 55 plus are 32% better off over the ditch. Adding fuel to the fire, let's also consider that Australian employers add 11% of super on top of these wages, while in New Zealand we get a paltry 3%. Clearly, with the best available data from both countries' governments, Australia has more money to offer Kiwis of all age groups. This is of course an average and could vary widely by state, occupation or industry. Jumping back into our Australian data, Table 10 shows us the breakdown by state. ACT, the nation's capital, pays the highest average weekly wage for every age bracket above 35. In the 21 to 34 age group, Western Australia shines, presumably from younger workers heading over for the higher mining wages, and the other 20s are better placed in Northern Territory. Jumping over into Table 5, it shows the breakdown by occupation. Fortunately, New Zealand reports its data with the same occupation groupings. In Australia, managers make 2700 a week on average, while in New Zealand this drops to a just under 2000 in a week of currency. Working professionals make $1900 on average in Australia, while in New Zealand it's just $1700. And for tradies, many of which have moved to Australia from New Zealand, the difference is $1700 there and $1300 here. It's no surprise why so many Kiwis are moving over. Higher super, higher wages, lower income tax, and a lower consumption tax. And finally, let's take a look at the industries. Once again, New Zealand reports on the same categories. It goes without saying that mining jobs in Australia pay extremely well. The average worker makes over $150,000 a year, or $3,000 a week, in Australia. In New Zealand, this drops to just $1,800 a week roughly 40% lower. Utility providers are another industry that pays substantially more in Australia, a whopping $2,400 a week on average versus $1,800 in New Zealand. Industries on the other side of the spectrum that pay higher in New Zealand are the finance, real estate and arts and recreation sectors. Australia pays more in every other industry however. If you enjoyed this comparison, I made a video in the past comparing the cost of living in both New Zealand and Australia, so make sure to check that out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe down below to see more content just like it. If you have any other ideas for a comparison between the two countries, or if anything surprised you in the video, please let me know down below in the comments. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers!